Hello, I'm a Pierre X Toy Cat, and recently I learned that Michelin starred chefs, people who work at really expensive restaurants, are the sort of people who really don't like cooking for themselves. This is something that shocked me because you assume, right, that oh, these people get paid so much to cook, they're the best chefs in the world, they must make the most amazing things, but in reality what it is, is they get paid to do something, so when they're doing it in their spare time, they just make moldy half-eaten bagels where they just chop off the, the bits that aren't ready to eat, or they make lazier things than even you or I do, and this same kind of thing made me wonder, what is the mind Minecraft version of that. What is the Minecraft that people play when nobody is looking? And I started to wonder about myself and see if people would be curious to know what I do when I'm not playing for videos. Because even when I play in the survival world, which is my go-to, um, this is still in some part that one day people will see it. I mean, I made this giant bed and now you're seeing it right now. I made that wood factory and now you're seeing it right now. So it's arguably part of the videos. What would I do if nobody was watching? And that is what I wanted to show you today. So I'm gonna load up a random world because I really do enjoy just seeing random seeds and seeing what the game gives me sometimes. And I love pretend that I do play in survival. I know I've got this big survival only thing on this channel and that's what I do for the most part when I'm playing. But most of the time when I'm not recording, when I'm just goofing off or doing something else, I do admittedly play in creative just cause it saves me gathering the resources. So I can test lots of bizarre things really, really quickly. So there's my first embarrassing admission of the day. The, the survival only, you know, the big uh, <laughs> advocate for survival only plays mostly in creative when I'm when no one's looking. Uh, that's probably because I do so much of this in my job. If I if we remove the YouTube, I play mostly survival Minecraft, I'm pretty sure. But because I play so much survival Minecraft and you know, there's some things that are just really hard to test and find out. I, I do play creative, I, I am ashamed to admit. And uh, when I'm playing creative, I'm testing a lot of things that I wanna find out. Also, first of all, here's an interesting seed, right? We're on a plains biome, a really nice plains biome. There's water, and then there's a village. So we'll go near that village, because I feel like village is just a perfect idyllic background for anything. And I wanna test something very interesting that I kind of learned recently. I was making a creeper farm in survival. Look, they have spawned villagers in natural survival. But um, I was making a creeper farm, and I learned that for the purpose of spawning in mobs, Buttons are treated as a full block, and I was wondering, like, if that's true, do you think you could, like, make a maze out of just buttons, or is it only treated as a full block for spawning and not for movement around? So, we're gonna make, like, a little button, uh, you know, area around a villager, and we're gonna see if he can escape the... Oh my god, okay, no, he had to jump to escape. Do you see that? He, he can't walk out there. They have to jump to get over the buttons? See, right? That is... <laughs> that is weird. I, I could enjoy doing this for a while, making, like, a miniature maze. Because all you have to do then is have a two block high ceiling. Like, if you just have another block on top of this, let's just say a trap door for now. Keep things uh, simple, I guess. But if you just have one of these um, in the ceiling above the buttons, then they should be able to walk underneath it like I can, but they won't be able to, I think. That's that's the theory here, right? So let's now, uh, let's just knock, move, move him away real quick. He's, <laughs> for some reason, they are insistent on jumping around nonstop. So what a weird piece of Minecraft behavior. Like, how have, how have I never noticed this before? This is why you test these things in creative, I guess. Because no, no one would just place buttons around a villager in survival. But now if we do this and we spawn a villager in there, that villager will trap himself in there as like a punishment. Even if we spawn it like an extra half block in the sky, let's say like a slab, that should be true, right? What a what a bizarre thing. Wait, so let's uh Yeah, let's have like top half slabs um underneath it. Okay, so now this is very clearly enough for anyone to get past, but you shouldn't be able to jump and get past it, right? And what happens is the <laughs> The villagers stay trapped. They are they are in a prison of their own mind, it seems. And that is so bizarre to me that that actually works. Like, what is that all about? So this is the sort of thing I like testing. And in reality, um, like just goofing around stuff like this, it's probably slightly higher brow than usual. Sometimes if I'm really just stressed, like thinking about ideas, what I do is I literally just run around uh, or sprint around Minecraft like this. And uh, you know, like flying around is fun and I can do that for a little bit. But what's way more engaging to me, I don't know why, this is my like fidgeting behavior. If I really need to like think about something like, oh, what am I gonna title this video? What am I, you know, what, what idea do I need to make next? And today I apparently decided no idea, but what I'll just do is I'll run around, sprint in creative, like I'm playing creative, just sprint around the world like this, trying to jump up hills and stuff without stopping. It's a dumb behavior to enjoy, but I really, really love it. And it's gotta be worth mentioning that while you're just kind of doing this goofing off behavior, it's when you make some of the discoveries about Minecraft that, again, I, I find like, again, just refreshing your mind is the best way to 
uh, think new things. I think meditation, which always sounds like such a weird spiritual adventure, really the, the bog meditation is just turning off your mind and turning it on again, like a computer. And, uh, you know, doing that inside of Minecraft is sometimes valuable. Like, one of the facts that we'd still genuinely forget, like, every time I see it, I'm like, oh yeah, uh, mushroom blocks and mushroom, uh, your giant mushrooms spawn in swamps. I think only on bedrock. They spawn in quite a few different biomes. I know one of them is bedrock exclusive, and it's a it's a really bizarre thing. Like, why is that the case? What is what is the deal with all of this, huh? Uh, and the answer is there isn't really much of an explanation. It just kind of is that way. Um, and yeah, flying away is at ground is a great way to be reminded of some of the natural stuff in Minecraft we don't think about when we see it at ground level. Like again, right now it's like, huh. This is a swamp, yo. Um, one of the blocks that you really don't see at this level is like lily pads. And every time I see this, I'm like, oh, what a great idea it would be to like have lily pads going across a swamp, like having a bridge in a swamp that uses lily pads. Even not in a swamp, right? What if we take these exact same, um, what if we take these exact same lily pads and just take them somewhere else? What if there was a, a bridge across this, uh, you know, ridiculously large gap? I mean, no way across the dubways, right? Bridget with lily pads, what a fun idea. And another thing you realize when you're placing this and you're like, oh man, I love this. Like you could have a little side bridge over here made out of mushroom blocks and then it'd be like a full on swamp bridge, right? But one of the things you realize when you're working on stuff like this is like, oh, but then why do the lily pads go sideways? Look at this, like I placed the lily pads all in the same direction, but yeah, they placed like this. There's three Pac-Mans facing right, three Pac-Mans facing left. And then up here it's going everywhere. And if I re, if I place and re-break them, do they go the same way? They do, look. Down, right, up, left. Try that again. Down, right, up, left. <laughs> and um, this this is, uh, you know, this is where some of the really dumb revelations about Minecraft are made. Because for instance, lots of, lots of details in Minecraft are randomly selected per block. So two sunflowers, look at, if we, make, if we place a line of sunflowers, notice how they won't line up entirely. Like they're, they're in a line and from a, you know, from like, up next to them, it looks kind of straight. But from above, you can see much more clearly that like, yeah, they go upwards, backwards. Some of them are closer to each other. Some of them are really far apart. Look at this gap right here between these two sunflowers. And if we remove and replace the sunflower, it doesn't change. So what's the deal with that? Every single block in a Minecraft world, if we turn on coordinates, which I guess we should do. I mean, if we're in creative, we can afford the, the coordinates, right? Um, but like every single coordinate, say two, minus 215, minus 100, will be like this. And then I wonder like, is that the same for every Minecraft world? Can we test that? Let's go to these exact same coordinates. Like, um, yeah, actually let, let, let's let's do this actually just for fun. Let's go to this exact same coordinates in another Minecraft world. And let's see if on bedrock, the sunflowers line up in a line like this. You know, this is my curiosity video. You're all watching it. Let's see what the answer is. So the way I'm gonna test this for sure is to teleport to my exact coordinates now, place a bunch to the right like I've already done and then pick a different world and see the same thing. So this second world will have a blank seed too, of course, purely random because I love to see a new world. Sometimes you see these beautiful things. That's why I have Seed Sunday, by the way. Uh, that's, that's, and again, Seed Sunday, if you think about it, it's such a weird contrast to the rest of my channel, which is like all survival, whereas Seed Sunday is like clearly 100% creative. But leaving that little contrast aside, I wanna know if this exact same thing is true. Because if it is, I, I was just kind of thinking, then that means that you not only can work out someone's coordinates based on their sunflower positions, which is dumb, but entirely possible. Please tell me there's, okay, there we go, we're good. Let's grab some sunflowers now. I think they're in here somewhere, right? There we go. You ever wonder why sunflowers have such a weird icon? And now we place sunflowers like this. Oh, they're facing a different way. Oh, I guess I'm probably facing, I'm placing them to the wrong side. Yeah, I guess this is what we should do. So let's uh, let's make a nice line of grass. Okay, but if I'm not mistaken, the same big gaps between certain ones are still there. The same weird kind of going backwards in certain spots is still there. Just to confirm actually, if we have sunflowers on the same block at different heights, does the Y value change anything? Because if it does, that changes everything, right? That That makes a lot of things very different, so. If we have a sunflower on the exact same block, but one below. Oh, the Y coordinate affects this as well. Every single Y coordinate has to be the same for this to match up. What a weird thing. If you if you don't like where a sunflower is placed, just move it up and down by a block or two, and it will move alongside that. So for instance, right here, this sunflower, perfectly centered. This sunflower, 
close enough to perfectly centered, but this sunflower also, you know, come on game. Give me some ugly sunflower blocks like this one. And you're like, nah, not taking that. Just try again the block above and then keep trying until it's right. And then you can find the perfect place for a sunflower. So yeah, what do I do when no one's looking in Minecraft? Stuff like this. I don't know why I don't post this online. I don't know why this little mystery that I've dove into uh, isn't a thing. But what I'm trying to say is like, there might be best coordinates for placing, say, lily pads. Because if I go over the exact same thing here, like this is a, a lake you might reasonably want to cross the lily pad. Um, you can see how, again, every block is going to have a different facing lily pad, regardless of what I do. Because most things in Minecraft you can control, but for some reason this is based on the, the block state that you're in, which is either universal or based on the world. I have kind of inconclusive results, because it looked close to the same, but then going up and down made me re -douse it. But still, you can see right here, look at the glory. It's, it's, it's strange, it's bizarre, but as long as you can get past the random lily pads, it's kind of nice. This is actually one of the big flaws of using bamboo too, because for some reason, this seems like an old Minecraft programming flaw from a long time ago, but bamboo was added in 2018, 2019, and um, as you can see, no, yeah, it must be in 2019. Uh, as you can see, um, the bamboo stems, and indeed the whole bamboo block, are also randomly placed, which means if we have a bunch of bamboo, it will never make a grid or anything close to it. And uh, yeah, it's a very wacky, weird, bizarre thing. Can you place bamboo underwater? You can't. What if we like, does water destroy bamboo, do you think? It must destroy bamboo. Only one way to know it for sure, though. Let's place some water. Have it go from here to the bamboo. It does, in fact, destroy bamboo. Unless it's already grown. It destroys bamboo plants, but not the bamboo blocks themselves. And you can't, because you can't place it in the water, that means you can do some very interesting things with this, right? So we just place a bamboo, make a little, like... Yeah, the, because the bamboo goes in weird, weird, like, corners of the blocks, it doesn't look like it's taking up the entire block. But yet, if I were to place a water block there, that happens. <laughs> oh, that is that is uncomfortable. Yeah, that means the best way to have water stored somewhere and make it look semi-natural is to have like four bamboo plants, and then you could then you could have water in the middle. <laughs> oh, this is uncomfortable. I don't like this at all. And then then this is the sort of thing that makes me think like, man. I can make a video about, like, uncomfortable placements for water. Because Minecraft physics for this sort of stuff, like, are really off. I I thought forever that Minecraft should, man, should really, um, should really consider changing the water physics. Because I hate that, like, having an aqueduct in Minecraft is a really cool idea that just isn't useful in practice. Like... Actually, you know what? Let's build an aqueduct. Whenever I build in videos, I feel really pressured to, like, pick a new block I haven't used just so, like, it's new and fancy. But one of my favorite things to build out of in Minecraft is brick. I just like it. I don't know why I like it. It's just a very satisfying resource to build things out of. And yeah, let's pretend there's a mountain spring up there. Let's just... Let's make that a thing. As you can see, look, it's a mountain spring. And right now, it's going down there. What One of the things I would love for you to be able to do is to have, like, a little viaduct that was actually useful to get water from somewhere like this to your town and you can do it right now it's just it's functionally a dumb idea in so many ways but i have an idea what if we just okay so if we have a little little redstone mechanism it doesn't have to be actual redstone it just has to be a piston and a lever i guess we'd have to redstone control it later but for now like okay there we go simple stuff lever piston put pull it on there the water goes off we could make a sort of system where like an entire like river you know an entire aqueduct stops flowing as a result of one block so maybe that's the benefit of making stuff like this so let's go let's show the value of this because no one's watching i can make the ugliest bridge i want and that, like, i always want to try stuff like in minecraft but then like people people tend to be like oh it's the ugliest thing i've ever seen and i feel like okay i was i was just kidding when i said that i really wanted to show you my autistic side I was just being funny. I'm glad we all appreciate it together. Um, but yeah, let's just uh, bring that down there. And I guess we have a block like that afterwards. No, it goes inwards and more another block. And then we place that. No, wait. Damn it. Placing placing stairs is hard in Minecraft. Can we all agree on that? If nothing else. I guess this is my bridge. As you can see, it's very pretty. <laughs> and now we're going to just, I guess, copy paste it repeatedly 
to get down where we want to go. Okay, so I've set it up, and, uh, and this is a beautiful bridge, by the way. Even got some flowers on there to help test that. And now I've got it saved in a structure block. I'll save it to memory for now, because I really don't want this in future. We'll just call it brick. <laughs> and what we do is we save this, and then we load it again, except we go like negative one on the y-axis, I want to say. Yeah, negative, I guess just two, because it's already a block down. And then we move it an extra, like, uh, nine blocks on this, I want to say, maybe. And then look at this. We load the bridge in. Oh, we don't load. We don't load the bridge in. I don't know why we don't, but we don't. Oh, no, it's here. Look at that. Okay, we <laughs> one block a little bit off, but that's fine. Otherwise, so I guess we add eight blocks every time rather than nine. And boom, we've made ourselves... A bridge that continues on from there to here. And let's see if the, the water flows all the way across. Because if it does, we might be on something genius here. I don't think we are on something genius, but... Hey, look, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, the, the bridge only works once in a row. It's not repeatable, which is a problem. So I should fix that, but I just really don't want to. So I won't fix that. And let's, uh, let's now move this another... Eight blocks across, so 23. Move it another block down, so one. And look at that. We're making ourselves a little viaduct, aqueduct thing. Question mark here. And if we just repeat that a few times. I think most normal people just build a castle in Minecraft when when they're bored and no one's watching. I think that's what I should have just said. Like, oh yeah, what I like to do is I like to build castles or billion rooms. I like to fantasize what it'd be like to be like. Instead, I'm like, no. I want to have bridges, and I want to have bridges that link infinitely to other bridges so that I can have water flow across all of them. Because this is this is how I see Minecraft, as a as a giant civil engineering challenge, I guess. Okay, so water flows down, then flows down, then flows down. I should remove one block each time. Okay, that, that strategy is not a very smart one, apparently. <laughs> remove one block each time, and then look at this, as long as we can... Oh, God. Okay, look, it's, it's fine. Look, and then... Remove two blocks this time, and just hope no one notices that the bridge does not add up under any sense of the word. Small side note, but have you ever seen this happen, where the water flows to a non-existent hole? I don't think I've ever seen it. Oh god, look at the... What, what weirdness have we achieved? <laughs> like, the water's trying to angle down into the stairs, I think, but it's not doing a good job. Anyway, look, we have all of this water, and it can all be controlled from a single... Piston. Oh yeah, look at that. I can I can drown, undrown an entire village. I guess if I make it flow off the edge, which I might as well just do from over here. Look at that. I can control the whole world flooding or not on a single command. Which may you could use this as like a rain system if you think about it. Like have a bunch of water spawn and then unspawn. <gasps> What if you what if you just flooded a world temporarily? What would happen? I'm realizing accidentally I might have just came up with the best way to remove snow from mountains in creative. All you gotta do, right, is just fill and then 100 blocks in each direction. Fill 100, fill 100, uh, water. And then if we make it flowing water, it'll remove itself, right? Can you just do that? Oh, okay, the flowing water does not remove itself. I guess we will have to do it for the game. So you remove the 100 by 100, replace it with some air. Okay, there we go. Now, oh <laughs> lord, what have we started? What is, what are we looking at right here even? I, I don't know what we just did, but I'm very glad that we did it because my god. <laughs> Look at the beauty. Look at the beauty that is this water trying to generate in. And also interesting enough, the game isn't lagging a huge amount. It's just trying to do it all at the same time. And because it can't do all of it at the same time, slowing down a little bit, which is arguably what you want. And yeah, this is a way to make rain temporarily happen in your Minecraft world. Although it will take me a while to... Look, 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 the water's... water hits the mountain. Do you know what happens next? All the snow goes away. Although for some reason the edges hit first. This middle area is just <laughs> struggling so hard. So I'll, I'll give you a third person perspective on this, I guess. Oh, you know what we'll do? This is meant to be low effort Minecraft, but I want to just sit and watch. So I'm going to grab a sandwich and we're going to watch and eat this together. Eat and watch this together. Whatever. Look, the shadows have generated already. So I've got myself an all day breakfast sandwich with some red looking bread. 
Is this common anywhere else? Like, I've, I've noticed it's only on this particular sandwich from this one store. The bread is always red. Like, actually it looks brown in the shot, but how do I can, how, how can I confirm to you this is really red? Because the bread is red. I do assure you that this is not me making my bed. The bread is red. And if I was lying, then I would be dead. That's a lie. But anyway, as you can see, <laughs> we have removed all of the snowballs from this mountain. And all we've had to suffer is... Oh, wow, this is such a weird thing. Honestly, that if I could get away with making maps this way, because it definitely would fail some one of the tests that Microsoft does in the marketplace. This would be so cool, right? Just breaking everything. Look, creepers have spawned in the darkness that is this water. That's how much water we have produced. Just by pure accident. This is this is something you can only do while goofing off in creative, I tell you, friends. But yeah, let's let's go inside. Let's have another nibble of my all-day breakfast sandwich. It's got sausages. It's got, I assume, bacon. Yeah, there's bacon in there. There's some egg bits, probably. I, I assume that's egg. Whenever something's labeled as all-day breakfast, I hate eating it any time that's not breakfast. I'm like, no. You tell me to eat this all day, I'm having this at breakfast time. Because all-day breakfast just means, oh yeah, eat what you want to, man. Like any any place, like McDonald's having like 11 a.m. or before breakfast, that is basically fascism. Honestly, mm, let's, let's not say basically. That is McDonald's telling me when I can and cannot have McDonald's all day breakfast or a all day breakfast. Why does McDonald's know better than I do? Someone's gonna take this seriously, so that was all a joke. I'm sorry. It takes a long time to clean a world like this. Hey, the mountains are getting clean. All that white sauce is coming right off my mountain. There's tomato sauce in here too. It really complements the uh, the bacon. Bacon is great by itself, don't get me wrong. But tomato sauce and bacon just just tastes like breakfast to me. Mmm. Tiny bit of egg on the side there. And some paste. I don't know what that paste is. And we are in business. It's so interesting to see how long the water took to get here. And how selectional the water is being. Like, the water nearest to me is generating the most. The water furthest away is still having issues. Look at this gap right here. We made we made an, an archway out of water. This would be such a cool thing to actually make in Minecraft, right? Like, a water house. <gasps> a water mountain. Because it wouldn't be too hard to do. As long as you had like holes in the ground to catch it. I guess you might as well just do lava at that point, right? <gasps> we can make a lava house. Like make a hundred by a hundred lava house. It would be dumb, but it's Minecraft, you know? Also look at this glory. I don't know what's happened here, but this is beautiful. I, I really am so confused as to everything that's happened here, but I, I am loving this. Like you can see the water from one dimension before the others. Okay, apparently this is a thing. You know what I've always thought was a great idea, but I've never done because it would be a very big waste of time. What if we did the same thing, but instead of water, we did lava on the surface of water. That way we could turn into obsidian. We can make like a platform on the water, right? Like you place it and then, oh, we did it wrong. Oh, wait. Okay, I think this is more interesting to me. This like stone platform we accidentally made on the lava. Man, that, actually, this is beautiful. I, I want to do something with this. Look at, look at what this creates. Look at the glory that is my my square of lava. <laughs> and people say I don't have design abilities. Actually, who says that? No one says that because I'm just too good at designing things. Hey, let's try this again under the water. Ah, there we go. That's what I was going for. Yeah, I've always thought like having a little layer under the water so that way you could like always breathe. Like, look at that. You can always like. Okay, wait. One one layer too too low. Try this again. Look at this, look at this. Oh, boom. Now we can, now we're in the water in the ocean, but we can always walk. Nice, right? I just turned on my face cam. That was only for one bit about eating a sandwich. It was a good sandwich though. One of the best ideas I heard recently that I might genuinely still do at some point, I reserve the right to do it, would be what if you replaced all the leaves of one biome with the leaves of another? And I thought that's such a good idea that I absolutely have to do it. So what I'm gonna do right now is see what all of these trees look like. This is a jungle apparently, with different leaves, because that that is what we have to do. So first, we go to sleep, take a nice little nap, enjoy the rest, because this is all we'll get. Also look at all those uh, jungle villages. Anyway, um, now let's fill an entire area, but with the wrong type of leaves. By the way, the, the command you have to type to do this is such a weird one, 
You're replacing Leafs 2 with Leafs 1. But, okay, we didn't do that correctly. But, okay, we... I do not understand what Leafs 2 is. There we go, we did it, I think. I legitimately cannot tell. Are they... Oh, is there like oak leaves mixed into these jungle trees? See, right, what a wacky, weird thing. Only some of the leaves have been replaced. Because only some of the... Like... Okay, no, now it's all going away? What is happening here? I am... I am lost and confused, and... Honestly, I need someone to help me. But this is what a jungle tree looks like with spruce leaves. I actually really love this. I think spruce leaves and, like, jungle... Might be the best two to switch. So we do that in future. You know where the idea, idea came from. But no, yeah, honestly, um, I wanted to make this video partly as like a, hey, isn't that wacky that like, every profession does this to some extent. I, I've seen it, you know, like people are experts in a field, but when you work in that field, you kind of want to take time offwards, offwards. And um, as a result of that, I feel like uh, it's something a lot of people don't know, but yeah, people who play certain games tend to dislike them in their spare time. And it's something I actively do try to fight against. Like, I I deliberately make the Minecraft that I play when I'm, you know, doing stuff fun. And I hope that shows for videos. I hope it's not the sort of thing where you're like, oh, play cat. Do things we enjoy, not things that you find fun. But, um, you know, like, I, I really enjoyed my End Island speedrun of Minecraft recently. That was a really fun challenge. I, I've been considering redoing it a few times, for instance. Um, I enjoyed starting in the Nether. I, I enjoy actually kind of, like, doing new things in Minecraft survival. And when I'm not doing new things in Minecraft survival, I do stuff like this. When I have spare time, I'm like, okay, I won't make videos today. Uh, I end up making second channel videos because I love the act of making videos. I love the act of sharing information. But sometimes you take a break from doing one version of a thing just to do another. And this is the thing that I take a break from Minecraft to do. Sometimes I take a break in Minecraft to go play some Minecraft. And that sounds insane, but such is the variety that comes with this game. That rhymed. Trust me, that did. That's that's how rhymes work. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed. This is a cool village, right? You can see it in the next week's Seed Sunday. I'm just kidding. This isn't Seed Sunday material. But you know what is Seed Sunday material? Things you can send to toycatassistant at gmail.com. Yeah, plug. Okay, thank you for watching, because I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.